build a program counter for a RISC-V CPU. First thing I like to do is define the ins and the outs. And one input that we need is the ability to set the address of the program counter. So let's take an in PC in program counter pin and it needs to be 32 bits because we have a 32 bit CPU we're going to be building. And uh, I like to do this in hex because uh, binary is just a bit unwieldy. Next thing we need, of course, is the clock because on every tick, the program counter is going to increment. And then for the output, we need two outputs. We need to know, obviously, what the output of the program counter is. So that's easy enough. And then we may need to know what the next count of the program counter is. The uh, address that we're going to be feeding into the CPU and the, ad and the addresses that we're dealing with are all byte-related addresses. However, when we are trying to get the next instruction for the CPU, um, they, those instructions are located on 4-byte boundaries because we're dealing with 32 bits. So the program counter actually needs to be uh, counting in um, addresses plus four. So I'm going to go ahead and name the uh, the next address as PC plus four, just to keep. You know, so when you when you look at this, you'll know that you're dealing with a counter, but it's counting by fours. So the next thing I always like to do is uh, define tunnels because uh, otherwise you're going to be drawing wires between things. And, it, and for something like this, it's probably not necessary because this is going to be pretty simple. But uh, I just it's just a habit that I get into because usually things you think are going to be simple, they start out that way, but they tend to become complex. And I always call my tunnels with a T at the end to keep the naming kind of straight. And then let's define tunnels for the output. Right, so the program counter is pretty simple. Yeah, we're going to use a register to store what the current count is. And that should be under memory here. And it's going to be 32 bits. And the input of this thing is actually going to be, obviously, the input for our module. Now, when is this going to be enabled to accept input? Well, in fact, it's going to be enabled to accept input all the time because our CPU is, is going to be constantly feeding uh, what the input of the program counter is going to be. Now, that input may actually be the output here, which we haven't defined what that's going to be yet. But um, suffice to say, the input is always going to be active with the next address to be stored into this register. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull the right address, uh, the right enable high, to uh, always enable this uh, register to accept input. And 
And then the clock obviously is our clock input. Right now for our, for our output of our register, we need to increment it. So let's get uh, an, an adder in here. And this adder is going to be dealing with 32 bits again. And the input of our adder will be the Q from the register. And then what we're going to add, remember I said that we're dealing with 32 bits and our, our program counter needs to be incrementing uh, four bytes at a time. So we will need a constant. And the value of our constant will be four. And so the output of our PC plus four will simply be the output of the adder. And the output of whatever the what is that, whatever is in the register will simply be this output. Okay, and um, I oftentimes do this, you know, when these turn red, that usually means you've got inputs and outputs uh, set up incorrectly. And of course, if you look here, I didn't set my output pins as outputs. So let's do that. And you can see that that quickly resolves itself. So when you see the red, Logisim is not really good at telling you why, but that's one reason why that can happen. That's really the extent of the program counter for a RISC-V CPU, at least in terms of how I'm going to design it. So um, thanks for watching.